this this is the game, Damiani. This is the game that started the whole Last Guardian fervor. Everybody's been waiting for the sequel to Shadow of the Colossus. A, a, not a new game, but something that uh, is relevant in the GT offices right now because you are working on an episode of Pop Fiction, which will be based on Shadow. Yes, Shadow of the Colossus. A lot of people have been bugging about doing the uh, so-called final mystery. It almost feels like, sorry to bring up a tangent, but the, the Mega Man 9 thing that people are bugging us to do. It's like, we don't know what it is. Someone says there's like a final like mystery that no one is found in the game, so go and find it for us. And it's like, oh shit. Okay. And this is one of those classic yeah. things where like all it takes is one developer in one game to be like, oh, there's something you missed, even though there is or there isn't. And then all of a sudden yes. it's, it's popular that, on Facebook, it's popular on Twitter, yes. everyone's talking about it. Very true. But unlike Mega Man 9, where it's just someone just said it and there's like no basis for it, no like clues or anything like that, there's actually a good development history behind Shadow of the Colossus. And that kind of plays into kind of like the myth. Uh, when the episode does go up, you'll be able to check it out. There's a lot of history behind that game's development that kind of led people to believe that a certain thing was still in the game. So we can, I mean, yeah, we'll get into yeah. details when the episode actually comes out. But how many times now, because you played through it again for the episode, how many times have you played Shadow? I think I've only played through it maybe f five times, I want to say. Wow, that's most. still yeah. only five times. I think I've played it. Well, compared to like the other <laughs> games I play for the for the show. Oh right, yeah, th that's on a lower end of, of completion. But what about you? Uh, definitely twice because I played okay. it when it first came out, all the, you know, all the way through, and then I got the HD version um, when they re-released that, which was great. I thought, which yes. is a really, I think it's a really well put together world that even though it does have some rough edges uh, it's very bright and i think that kind of is it's very dusty so i think that's kind of done to hide like the um, oh, yeah. uh, the edges the rough edges of just the classic ps2 blocky environments definitely uh but it's just such a beautiful world i don't care like even when i'm staring right against the rocks that are clearly like jaggy and have like very basic textures on them um just the way the whole i, I think the aesthetic really works to pull the whole world together um and it's amazing, so good in fact, that people still can't let go of Last Guardian because it's like the, this uh, the series which started with Eco or Ico and, and moved to last uh, um, to Shadow of the Colossus totally skipped the Generation 7, this last generation, the HD generation that we left. Uh, so what is it other than the obvious about Shadow of the Colossus you think that people just go nuts for? I and mean, there, there wasn't many games that did what Shadow of the Colossus did. And, like, Eco, or however you pronounce it before, I call it, I say Eco. Yeah. So Eco before it, I felt like that was a more a more focused experience, like yeah, guiding your companion through these, like, kind of puzzle-based dungeon environments. That was, that, that felt more focused. And while, yes, there is a clear objective in Shadow of the Colossus, go kill these Colossus, the Colossi, that, that was pretty much it. It was like, hey, like, this world, there's, like, Everything was working for it so well in terms of like the scale of the world, as you mentioned. Like, yes, we I think a lot of us gave a pass to kind of the rough edges because like, look how big this world is. Like, everyone's like, man, open world games. Like, I want to see something like that. And during the PS2, seeing just like, here you go. Then we might not have a ton of quests for you to do, and it might not be a lot of objectives and fun things to do like in like a Grand Theft Auto. But here's the most open world you're gonna get. And at that time, like on a technical level, that was just like so amazing to see that. And even though there wasn't really that much in the world, you still initially felt like I had this sense of wonder and I can go anywhere over here and there might be something, the possibility of seeing something. Then mix that in, in that there was like the, the, the different class that you have to kill. Like just getting to them. At first it's very straightforward, just right, right ahead, go to the first one. But as you progress through the game, like you have to like get to know the lay of the land. Like it's not always so clear the path to getting to them. And you're you know, meandering, going down like cliffs, finding alternate paths. It was kind of an adventure in itself for that. And intimidating yeah. when you would discover oh, yeah. that area where you'd be like, I gotta go where through this cave, what? Oh, yeah. And then all of a sudden you come out of the cave and you're in the desert and it's like, oh crap, like I'm clearly there. Where's this guy gonna pop out of? Just kind of waiting for that the cinematic transition to be like, here you go, now you're in the fight. And it's amazing like how big these areas on are, are, are these areas are. And as you're going through them, man, this is taking a long time to get here. This is huge. But each time you come across a colossus, it's like they're so big. You realize that's the, the arena. Like crossing whole area, like I'm going to be fighting in here. And then during a fight, it's so fast paced. You were so thankful that you had that much area right. to work with. It kind of they did a really good job with that. Uh, and then just like the the whole struggle against each colossus, figuring out what to do. The whole, the, like, so let me just get this out of the way. Like, I get frustrated with the controls, but not in the sense that, like, it delivers the feeling that you are really, like, 
fighting against like a, 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 a like an impossible task. Like these giant creatures are just like shaking and trying to hurl you off, and of course it's supposed to be a pain in the ass to climb up. My issue was always like little hit, like not hit detection, but kind of collision or like angular stuff where I'm clearly trying to climb climb straight up, and I bump into something that looks like it's still fur, and I'm like the character gets turned around. Like it wasn't because it was anything to do with there was just some wonky physics here and there. And the character's that, balance was always hard to determine. So when you're like running across something's back, and then all of a sudden oh, yeah. he slips, it's hard to tell like. If it's teetering, like at what specifically angle, I'll start to lose my balance and need to grab on. I, yeah, I mean, I felt that was that wasn't too unfair. Yeah. Uh, I felt that was fine, and I got used to like getting ready to hit, hold the shoulder button, the, the hold on, get, get 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 a good focus here, and hold on tight. But it was more just going along with how like I, to, fr this supposed to give you the feeling of frustration. Like this is difficult. This is frustrating. Mixing in those little like issues that like I was just talking about, this m pushed it a little over the edge for me at some point. So I was like. I clearly did this. Why didn't you do that? Yes, I get. I'm supposed to be like swinging around. I my grip's going away. I can't get the stab. It's like, oh, like charging up the stab sometimes. You see the like the circle expanding, the white circle, and like you hit the button to stab, but it already like the shadow, the cloth has already moved, and you it didn't do anything. I'm like, I you, I seriously just hit the button. Why didn't it like stab? It's I was like, it's kind of like a oh. power shot in Mario yeah. Tennis. Where you like run over to where the ball's coming, and then you have to like charge up your shot. And the more you charge it up, the stronger hit you're gonna go. But the you know there's that that, that edge where it's like if you hold it too long, you're totally gonna miss it. Yeah. So I mean, it's give and take. It, yeah, it was just the reward, the risk reward thing you had to do there. But those types like everyone keeps calling it like those were like the bosses. But I also think those were like the the game's dungeons as well because those are like the puzzles. Like yeah. you have to scale, you have to find them, you have to scale them, you have to figure out their weak points. Some of those on the first time could take up to an hour, I feel, for some people, just because of how... The first time, yeah, for sure. Especially the, 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 no spoilers, but the, the final one, like, I don't, if, I, that at least took me an hour the first time. I was like, dang, I know if they had like 16 of, of that caliber, that would have been insane, but... And like, there's yeah. so much finesse involved, even going back and playing the HD version, and I get to like the desert guy with the wings, who like is a big snake, and he'll like come down on the ground and you gotta jump on the wing. Like, easier said than done. It's not something oh, you yeah. can just nail and do every time. Because you don't know what direction he's going to be moving, and you know they have like strategically placed rocks in the environment, and so if you're locked on and running, you could run right into a rock because it's like I'm focused on him. I can't see, you know, where I'm going. Which actually brings me to one of my favorite things about the game is the lock-on is awesome, considering this is like you know a, a skyscraper-sized thing that you're trying to target, and the fact that you can just hold one button and the perspective is always really great, even if you can't see yourself a lot. It was just really easy to understand the environment where you were, where it was. And, and never lose sight of it, um, I thought was a, a tremendous accomplishment on the PS2, you know, to, yeah. to have that kind of scale. Um, even playing something now like Grand Theft Auto Online, I'll have like a helicopter over me and I'll raise my gun up and there's like a limit where it's like, oh, you can't raise your gun any higher. And it's like, well, I could really, you know, in that game, like it, it, it's never obstructed. It never gets to a position where it's like, well, you can't see him anymore. Like you the camera is always focused on that guy um, on, on each Colossus. And so it just helps you figure out like where you are, where it is. Get you know get used to its attack patterns and stuff. Love that they can they stare at you like they like some oh, of these guys yeah. like like the bull guy who charges like right before he goes like you can actually see his eyes like looking right at you. I love you can uh, when you hit him even if it doesn't do anything if you hit him in the face with an arrow like their eyes will turn yellow they'll get pissed or turn red and you can tell they're 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 targeting you. Uh, that added a lot of thought. I mean I think one of the best things I loved about that game is it felt so intimidating to play that game. A lot a lot of tension, but the more you I I got into it on my first playthrough like. We just did a live stream recently. Like I called it, "Be Brave," because that game is all about like the coolest stuff happens in that game when you are brave, and that's even the way like you're supposed to do some of the battles. Like you said, staring down a Colossus, that's some the strategy to some of them. You're supposed to stand your ground. They'll come up to you, stop, and then like they get ready to attack, and that's when they expose their weak points. Like that's awesome. So if you're just running around afraid the whole time, you're gonna get nowhere in that game. Like most of the time, that I I love that about that game, and I think that's. What a lot of people want is a game that delivers on those types of emotions, and it was such a, a minimalistic approach. Even like the story, like the, it's like that story, like they give you just enough. Like man, there's something going on here, but I don't know the whole story, and you never really get the whole story. It's kind of like left a little bit ambiguous. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, I think that's what when people saw the Last Guardian, they were like, "Holy crap!" Like the imagery you're showing me here with what I know you've done in the past. Yeah. This looks, the potential for this is amazing. Yeah, it's really depressing. Uh, yeah. One last thing uh, to bring up that's kind of hard to quantify. I don't know if there's like a word for it, but like 
Uncharted and Prince of Persia and Assassin's Creed are the only other franchises I can think of that do this really well. But that sense of like, <gasps> when you like leap off of something oh, and yes. you're seeing that your character just flailing in the air trying to grab onto something else. Even if you know you're totally going to be fine. Even if you've done, I've done this jump a million times before. I know all I got to do is hold the R1 button. There's still that sense of like, oh my god, I'm not attached to something anymore. And just, and there was one shot in the very first Last Guardian trailer where we see that character run to the edge of a bridge that's collapsing and he makes that kind of leap of faith, you know, to try yes. to grab onto something that uh, makes that game really exciting. I never got old for me, you know. I, yeah, the, the, the amazing action platforming in this game and just the use of music. The, how yeah. it's so, like, these are docile creatures. They're just like this ominous music as you approach them. And as soon as you get on their back, the music escalates. And the, the classic music as you're fighting them, it's just... It just works well perfectly, and you, I don't know about you, but I almost felt sad sometimes when I killed some of these these giants because they were just like they weren't really doing anything. Like, in not to spoil anything, you, you, I, I mean, you can kind of read between the lines what's going on as you play that game more. Like, you're kind of maybe what's going on here? Are you I like this for good. Or you I like the little evil? mini game of seeing how far you can run away from the colossus before oh, all yes. that like snake the, before all yes. the little tendril things yes. catch you. You know. Oh man, um, yeah. And again with the lock on, like you could lock on to the colossus and run away, and you could see all these crazy this like ocean of uh, of black goo just hunting you down. Yeah. Uh, creepy game, something that how how what was it? Oh five, oh six, yeah, oh four out. maybe. No 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 no. Oh five. Yeah. Um, I mean it's you know almost a decade later, still talking about it, still hoping for the sequel. And uh, we will look forward to uh, middle of July for the, the pop fiction yeah. to, to see the next episode. Thanks, Mike.